Hello everybody, it's Mike. All right, you ready for some controversy? Uh, I am not afraid of uh, controversy when we're talking about, I think, uh, helpful truth. Part of that is being willing to expose challenging things that people don't want to look at. So, um, obviously you saw the very incendiary title of the video, right? Which is, do Trump's followers have Stockholm Syndrome? What is malignant narcissism? So I'm throwing in a new term here. I have no idea if it exists or not. <laughs> I'm just Maybe I've made it up. I don't know. But I'm uh, going to in, uh, inject a term uh, called malignant codependence. Malignant codependence. We hear malignant narcissism a lot, but we don't hear about malignant codependence. So, um, be prepared. Uh, what I'm going to say might bother you a lot. I'm okay with that. It's not my intention to intentionally bother you just for the sake of bothering you. But, um, you know, there's obviously what we've seen in the United States over the past week. What we've seen is uh, an explosion of uh, lethal conflict uh, that really resembles, if you look at it, it really resembles an extremely volatile, dysfunctional family. And, uh, you know, when you've got violent, explosive, volatile, dysfunctional family members, there is a tendency among some of the family members to just not say anything, to just not look at things, to just not deal with it. And they get very violent, uh, some of them, especially more of the, the, some of the more codependent ones. They're very violent if you want to take a look at it. But, I mean, obviously not talking about things isn't changing anything. I mean, it, uh, it resulted in a historic event. Uh, the first time in the history of the United States where a, an armed um, enemy uh, broke into the Capitol and inflicted loss of life, you know, attacked uh, policemen and ha there were people in there that had the intention to do damage, to take hostage and perhaps uh, physically harm or kill lawmakers. So this isn't just, you know, people want to say, please don't talk about politics. We're not talking about politics here. Politics is when you're discussing whether or not, you know, should there be, you know, more social programs for the homeless? No, the homeless need to work for themselves. We need to cut taxes. That, that's politics. People can get really animate about that, but that's politics. When you start um, killing people and when you start taking away people's right to determine their own uh, political environment while simultaneously claiming that people are denying that of you, there's obviously some major issues going on. So this is my contention. My experience is that uh, we're dealing with, um, you know, all kinds of, I want to specifically look at people who are die-hard Trump followers. And again, in the United States, it's split almost down the middle. I think hopefully things have, you know, I, I've woken up. I mean, I, I had a lot of opinions about Trump and I had a lot of opinions about people who followed him. I've had continuing growing concerns over, you know, uh, people's inability to accept uh, reality. You know, um, the idea that, you know, people are, you know, like some of the people who stormed the Capitol, you know, some of them said, we, what we want to do is we want to force them to do an investigation. As if there hasn't been 60 court cases, an investigation by the Department of Justice, by the Attorney General of the United States, who's since resigned, uh, multiple recounts. Um, you know, the, the person responsible for the security of the election in Trump's 
Uh, administration said it was the safest uh, election in history. I mean, you can't have that on one side and then somebody on the other side say, I just want to do what I have to do to get them to to do an investigation. I mean, there's just a serious lack of connection here. So there's a lot more going on than just people disagreeing about politics. And um, so I thought it was good to look at. As I said, I'm making the assessment here on this channel that we're dealing with um, people, especially Trump's followers, who are suffering from um, Stockholm Syndrome. So if you're not familiar with Stockholm Syndrome, Stockholm Syndrome is when um, you have somebody uh, violently taking somebody else hostage, perhaps even threatening their lives, and the hostage at some point, uh, in order to survive, will start to align themselves uh, emotionally and consciously and identify with their captors. And so this is Stockholm Syndrome. And uh, so I'm going to introduce something here which you may or may not have heard of, which is called the Karpman Triangle. So let's bring that up here. Here's the Karpman Triangle. And coincidentally enough, enough it came from something called bpdfamily.com. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. That's just the way it turned out. So the Karpman Triangle here, you see... You've got this triangle. So you've got the persecutor, you've got the rescuer, and you have the victim. And it's a triangle because each, it's, it's sort of like musical chairs. Everybody has, uh, in this scenario, in this triangle, everybody here has um, a role that they gravitate towards. But, the way that it works is that at some point you end up being one or all of these uh, throughout the scenario. So this represents the unconscious dynamic. The unconscious dynamic is, uh, and by the way, everybody here is a victim. Even though there's one person who identifies as the victim, everybody here plays the victim, even when they're persecuting a rescue. So here you have, uh, on the bottom you have the victim, and the victim is the person who's being persecuted. So the persecutor is blaming. So the way the persecutor functions is that they blame and they are correct and everybody's incorrect. You have to do things my way. You're, you know, and, and I'm going to bring up some comments. So you're going to see in the comments today people who were normally either victims or rescuers who got so enraged by my previous uh, video that they then turned and became the persecutor and are mercilessly attacking me just for just for talking about it. That's all I'm doing is I'm just talking about it. And that is so threatening to them that they uh, change from either the victim or the rescuer and then they become the persecutor. Um, so, uh, but in each of these cases, everybody's, their core essence is of the victim. So the victim is expressing their victimhood and they're projecting their victimhood onto everything around them. Everybody's out to get them. Everybody wants to do it to them. You don't understand. The persecutor is the victim who's now fighting to, uh, you know, fighting against their victimhood. And so they're persecuting. This is the narcissist, the abuser. And then you have the rescuer, which is the, the, and they're all codependent also. This is all three of them are codependents. But the rescuer then takes on the role of the codependent, the hero. So this is the empath. This is the, the codependent. This is the person who is, who is also a victim uh, in terms of their identity, but they are going to project their victimhood onto the victim. They're going to, with their cape flapping in the wind, they're going to fly down from heaven and they're going to save the victim from the persecutor. And so they're, they're projecting their victimhood and they're, um, you know, fighting against the persecutor. But it also happens within a family dynamic. You'll have, like, let's say, an abusive father 
you'll have a rescuing codependent mother and you'll have a victim child. And each one of these are responsible for keeping this triangle going. So if the victim starts to take responsibility for their life, their, the rescuer, for example, may turn into the persecutor. And if the victim starts to take, uh, take responsibility for their lives, the per persecutor might become the victim. And then the rescuer will then rescue the persecutor from the victim who is now persecuting the persecutor by taking, uh, taking responsibility. I'll give you an example in, in my life. I've shared this uh, with you before, which was that uh, when I was in college, I was an actor and I went off to, uh, to college to become an actor and I, I became, um, I got the lead role in main stage production as an undergraduate, which at that school was unheard of. Only the graduate students got to get lead roles and I came in as this, uh, this freshman and I came in and I took away all the lead roles and so it was a big thing. It was a big deal in that tiny little pond. And uh, my parents came to watch me as, you know, I said, come see me. I've got the lead in the main stage production. It's a big deal. And as I was in the dressing room, you know, putting my stage makeup on, I hear my mother and my father talking to the dean of the department, the dean of the theater arts department. And he comes down and he starts, uh, he starts, uh, slathering me with praise, telling my parents, I, I wasn't there, I could hear it, but the, he was saying, you're, you're Michael Denny's parents, you should be so proud, he is amazing, he's going to be so blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh my God, that's it. I'm, I'm in. My parents now see what I'm doing, I'm finally going to get love and approval, and I was so happy, and I did the performance of my life, standing ovation, people wiping the tears. and So I go to meet with my parents, expecting to be you know, showered with praise that I finally got, you know, I'm on my way. Silence, nothing. And uh, then we go to go out to eat. And there's this really uncomfortable silence in the car as we're driving to the restaurant, you know, just a couple of, you know, half a mile away or whatever it is. And I'm wondering what the hell is going on? Why is there so much tension in the car? And then my father breaks the silence and he says, well, you're not there yet. Ooh. So here I am now. I'm feeling uh, attacked. My mom, again, silence, sitting down, waiting for the food. Silence, just this toxic silence of nothing happening. And I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. And then my mom leans over to me and she looks at me with dis just absolute disgust in her eyes. And she says, so why do you do it? Is it for the applause? Do you like the attention? I, I, I could not believe what I was experiencing. Well, what I was experiencing was the Cartman Triangle. So my father, alcoholic, he takes on the role of the persecutor. He's the, the abusive, you know, emotionally unavailable uh, alcoholic father. Now, I don't know this at the time, I'm in my 20s, I haven't figured all this stuff out, but it turns out that my dad was insecure. Even though he was extremely successful in his business, he was very insecure. So for me to go out and get all of that attention and to get all that praise, for him to listen to the dean of the department praising me to him, for him that was he was being humiliated. Because in his mind he was hearing what a loser he was, not how great your son is. So my mom, being the good codependent, she's got to rest, she normally has to rescue me as the son from the abusive alcoholic father, she runs to protect him because now I've become the abuser. And because now I have made the persecutor feel insecure, so she's gonna rush to defend him by then she becomes the persecutor, the persecutor becomes the victim, and um, uh, the victim, I don't know what I became at that point. <laughs> In their mind, I became the persecutor because I was accomplishing something. But what was really happening is that I was operating from the level of consciousness. So this triangle is, is from the realm of unconsciousness. The realm of consciousness would be the persecutor becomes the coach. Excuse me, I, I take that back, sorry. The persecutor becomes the uh, somebody who challenges you. 
So challenges you in a positive way. That's a lot of what I do here. I challenge you in a positive way. You come at me with, I'm a victim. You don't know what they did to me. And I'm going to say, no, you have to take full responsibility. You chose to be in this relationship. Let's take a look at your selfishness. So in that case, I'm challenging you. The rescuer becomes the coach. So the coach uh, gives long-term help. What the rescuer or codependent does is gives temporary help. Don't worry, it'll be okay. Just wipe your mouth and do what you're told. Um, you know, here, let me do it for you. Uh, here, let, let me make you feel better. This is what the codependent does with the borderline. When you're helping the borderline get through the week or whatever it is, or you're taking on, whatever it is you're doing to rescue them, it's always temporary. It never lasts, it never results in the borderline actually getting any strength within themselves and uh, moving on. It's, it's, as you know, it never lasts. And uh, the victim then becomes like the student who learns and grows, okay? So now you got a basic idea of this. Uh, I'm gonna share with you some comments from my channel, from people who would normally uh, either take on the role of the rescuer or the victim, because as I come on here and I do my thing, you know, uh, if I'm doing my job right, I'm the coach, and they're going to end up taking, and I'm trying to talk them out of one of these three roles. But you're going to see how now the either the codependent or the victim is going to then become the absolute merciless persecutor. So whenever that's happening, by the way, this is all what you're seeing here, this is all projection. Whether you're persecutor, rescuer, or victim, it's all 100% projection. When you are rescuing the, uh, when you're rescuing the borderline, you are projecting onto the borderline what you want somebody to do for you. You actually identify unconsciously as the victim and you want somebody to come and save you. Now that's too painful to be the victim, so you take on the role of the, of the rescuer, of the super empath, and you look for somebody who needs rescuing, which, you know, the borderline's a great example. So you fly down from the sky with your cape flapping in the wind, and you scoop them up and you nurture them with the hope that you will fix them forever and they will never ever have any pain whatsoever. Because their pain reminds you of your pain and what you're really doing is you want to silence their pain so you won't have to feel yours, which is projection. You want somebody to do that for you, right? So the persecutor takes on what was done to them. So the persecutor is always uh, was a victim, usually a childhood victim. And so what they do is they then take on the persona of the persecutor because they're now going to reflect, they're going to project onto the victim how they really feel about themselves. So they'll say, you're this, you're a loser, whatever it is, you're horrible, whatever abuse that they heap upon the victim, it's because that's how they feel about themselves. They can't tolerate that. So in order to, to deal with it, they launch it at the victim. Now the victim is usually a codependent who needs to avoid their deepest feelings of pain and loss and uh, abandonment. And so their job is actually to rescue the rescuer. So they take on the role of the victim so that the, both the per persecutor and the rescuer will not have to look at their own feelings. So that's why when the victim starts, like in my case, I started you know, achieving something and doing something good, both the persecutor and the rescuer attacked me because I was abdicating my role of being the victim so that my mom could be the rescuer, my dad could be the persecutor, and everybody doesn't look at their feelings. Right? You got it? So that's what I'm saying is happening here, that Trump's followers are either one of these three things. Trump's followers, again, because there, there's, there, there's nothing that makes any sense about anything they say. Uh, we have to, we, you know, it's been stolen from us. No, we've proven that actually it, this was a free and clear election. There has to be another investigation. And all they're doing is they're repeating what Donald Trump has been saying. Now, had Donald Trump from the beginning said, yeah, I lost, I looked at it, I investigated, sad as it is, I lost, I wish Joe Biden the best, I, I disagree with his policies, then there would, he would have been destroying this triangle. But he's been 
he's been stoking this triangle from the very beginning. In 2016, he was already setting the stage for this by saying if he lost in 2016, it was because it was a rigged election. He ended up winning, so he dropped that. But now this time he lost, then he could go and say, I'm a victim, they're stealing from me. And I talked about it in the last video about he being the good narcissist, co uh, comorbid borderline, he can't tolerate uh, anybody rejecting him. It's, it's death to him. So he can't, he goes into uh, psychotic denial and uh, can't even accept the possibility that he could have lost. It's just, it's un, un, unfathomable to him in his psychosis. And so here we have 50% of the population acting as some kind of codependent. Either they are the victim, the victim role would be the people, and I'm telling you this because I've felt this pressure. Just making this video, I felt this pressure. Don't say anything, don't cause any waves, don't talk about politics, don't, don't make anybody upset, you'll lose subscribers. I mean, that's something that keeps being I felt it, but it's been thrown at me, and you're going to see it, you know, violently thrown at me. Don't say anything we don't want you to say. Um, so there's those people who then, just to keep the peace, will go along and not challenge the nonsense. When Trump says that I've been, I've, this is rigged, it's all politics, um, you know, nobody challenges it. And then the repetition of words like mainstream media that's been going on for 40 years but that's that phrase is there to create a codependent reaction in you so it's either meant to turn you into an antagonist where you fight for the mainstream media which is very not it's not going to go over well because it's not popular but if you keep repeating something over and over again then it becomes its own power word so mainstream media, even if some, even if, you know, I watch NPR or if I watch CNN, you know, and I personally enjoy that and like that, somebody says mainstream media, my first response as a codependent isn't to say, wait a minute, that's a made up word that really means nothing. It's just something that people use, you know, who have an agenda against the free press. Now, I can't say that because it's not politically correct. So I'm forced into this to try and defend whatever it is, CNN or NPR, whoever it is, which is then all you've done is you're now part of the triangle. So that's one. The other one is then to, uh, is to identify with the persecutor who says, I'm being persecuted, because that's what the persecutor is saying. I'm being persecuted. I'm right. You're wrong. And so we identify with that and we become that or we become the rescuer. The rescuer who, this is the, this is the QAnon. So you've seen different guys at the, who uh, stormed the Capitol. So you've got the one guy who has the Camp Auschwitz shirt. That guy's a persecutor. The guy with the, the horns, he's a rescuer. He is there codependently walking around with the persecutors because according to him, QAnon you know, there's going to be some aliens that are going to come from the sky that will set up Trump. And he'll tell you, no, Trump says all these really crazy things, but he doesn't mean it. So he's taken on the role of the good codependent uh, wife who's wife to the alcoholic who says, no, you don't understand. He doesn't mean it that way. You don't hear him when he's alone with me. You know, he really does love you. It's complicated. He's been through a lot. So that's the QAnon shaman guy who's you know, do I have a picture of him on here somewhere? Yeah, so that's, that's, wait, where'd he go? No, I guess I got rid of that. Anyway, the QAnon shaman guy is the, he's the rescuer, he's the codependent, and he is linking arms with the persecutor in order to not rock the boat. Because what he really wants is he really wants daddy's love and approval. And he's going to do that by saying, no, you don't understand, he's really deep and he's, he's this hidden agent and he's working for Q behind the scenes, right? And then, of course, then uh, all right, all right, we'll keep going. So let me just read some of the, the comments here, which uh, really are quite amazing. Let me see if I can find some of the really good ones here. 
Um, let's see. Let's let's start with this one. So this one, uh, this person says, uh, this is again from my my video I did yesterday, which is you know, does Donald Trump suffer from borderline personality disorder? Where I talk about his behavior, his impulsivity. Is he acting like a secondary psychopath? Is he a borderline comorbid uh, with um, narcissistic personality disorder? So she responds and she says, no, it's the other way around, sir. So she's taking on the realm, in my experience, the realm of the rescuer, the codependent, who is now going to make excuses and violently defend the persecutor. In this case, that would be Donald Trump. So she says, no, it's the other way around, sir. They are all narcissists on the Dems side. Now, one of the things that people do when they are emotionally dysregulated when their codependence is in full bloom, whether you're the victim, the persecutor, or the rescuer, is you talk in generalities, black and white thinking. So uh, I talked in that video about critical thinking. Critical thinking first says that we all have an emotional agenda and we need to know what that is to make sure that we don't get either manipulated or we don't manipulate the truth towards our agenda. Second thing we do is we ask three questions. We say, when is something 100% true and 100% false? Uh, you can tell when somebody is deep in their issues because everything will become black and white. There will be no middle ground. Everything is either good or bad, black and white, up or down. So generalities. So that first question, that's as far as they get. So because for them, everything is either true or false. Um, in this case, she's making that statement. She's saying that all of the Democrats are narcissists. Now, my experience also in doing this channel is that when a codependent, the empath, when they're challenged on the fact that the borderline will never be able to love them the way that they want, that the borderline either one of two things, either the borderline will never love them the way that they want or um, that um, the, border, the, the, the borderline is not evil. Because if they don't get what they want, the next thing they do is they start talking about the borderline is an evil person, they're horrible, and I'm in the middle. I'm, not, I'm saying, no, they're not evil. They have a mental illness. They can't help it. But that doesn't, that doesn't take away the horrificness of their psychopathy. And I have no problem going into uh, revealing my understanding of their psychopathy and the tremendous pain that they cause. But at the same time, I don't see them as evil, and I don't see them as these evil geniuses. They're people who have a, a mental illness. But the, uh, the codependent will want to either paint the borderline as an evil genius and a narcissist, or they're just a victim and I can fix them. There's no middle ground. There's no middle ground of, wow, that person is definitely damaged and has been victimized, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it, and they're going to be hurtful to me, and I need to get the hell out. That's the middle ground. They can't do that. So she's doing that. She's going to the defense of, in this case, Donald Trump, and she's making anybody who disagrees with him, the Democrats, who are saying, no, the facts are is that he lost the election. And here's the 60 uh, court cases and the multiple recounts and the multiple investigations uh, by both Democrats and Republicans and judges. You know, here's the facts. And so the, the codependent says, no, it's the other way around. You're disagreeing with my husband, my daddy, Trump. Therefore, you're a narcissist because you're not doing what they want. Uh, so she's saying all the Democrats are narcissists. And then she's talking about the gaslighting. So here you have projection because this is exactly what Trump did. He started gaslighting when uh, things didn't, the, the, uh, the, uh, the election didn't go his way. He demanded recounts and investigations, and he got more than anybody ever has. And we, you know, we they they uh, gave him everything that he want that he wanted. And he started when they started saying, "Here's the facts. Here are the numbers." He started gaslighting them by saying, "No, it's a plot. It's the worst plot." So Trump is the gaslighter here, but. 
this this uh, this codependent um, commenter is now going to turn it around and say that sh that she's being gaslighted, that Trump was the one that's gaslighting. The smear campaigns are off the charts, she says. And here again, we've got projection, because what did Trump do from the very beginning? The beginning of his political career was started with smear campaigns, uh, personally attacking, smearing the other side, saying uh, things like, like um, Obama is the founder of ISIS, saying that Ted Cruz's dad killed JFK. I mean, just you can't get more of a smear campaign than that. And that's just two examples. And he continues and has done that. So here we've got projection. She is protecting the persecutor and she's turning around and projecting onto others who are actually challenging the narcissism and the craziness and calling them narcissists, calling them gaslighters and smear campaigners, etc., etc. And she says, they are the true borderlines, like Hitler. So this is an interesting projection right here. So uh, very briefly, if you know how Hitler came to power, Hitler came to power uh, during a time when uh, Germany had lost the Second World War and they were going through tremendous financial hardships. The morale of the German, German people were tremendously broken. They felt victimized. They felt... And apparently they were treated really poorly after the First World War, so they may, maybe they had some reason to feel that way. And so he, uh, Hitler, uh, took advantage of that, manipulated that. Trump is taking advantage of that with COVID, saying that COVID is a plan against them and he's a you know a victim and we need to stand for, uh, you know. So we've got people going around saying, um, you know, I, I have the right not to wear a mask and then creating super spreader events and all that kind of stuff. So we've got that and all of the challenges that are happening in lockdown, personal, emotional, uh, psychological, uh, um, and uh, uh, financial, it's very difficult. So we've already got people, if they're already primed for a victim mentality, then this is just inflaming it even more. And he was inflaming that. He hasn't done anything to help people feel better. He tells them they're all out to do it to you. And then uh, what Hitler did is uh, on his rise to power, the free press would challenge Hitler on a lot of the things that he was doing. As he was creating this campaign, he's looking for a scapegoat. So he created this, uh, created, you know, said that the Jews did it, you know, in some, in, in some way that we don't really understand. And um, so th then, you know, the Jews were the scapegoat. And the free press was challenging him on that and other things. And so he called the free press the lying press, exactly like what Trump has done. From the beginning, this whole word, like if you're not familiar with where the term fake news came from, it was actually hijacked from people in the mainstream media who were pointing out that fake stories were being leaked into uh, social media from the Russians that the Russians were bringing fake news. And so the first time the word fake news was used, it was used against uh, false stories that were put into Facebook and Twitter and things like that by Russian operatives. And as soon as uh, Trump heard that, he hijacked it and started using it on the free press, the mainstream media. Mainstream media is, is lying to them. It's fake news. So here she's uh, talking about that. Um, Let's see, um, he, let's see, so they're all true, but like Hitler, so he's calling the Democrats Hitler, when in actuality, Trump is the one who's following Hitler's playbook to the T. Uh, she says, taking off all conservative voices, that's never happened. <laughs> There's no shortage of conservative voices out there. They have their own, uh, they have their own talk shows and radio shows, and uh, they have, television stations, you know, Fox News for a while was, and still is to some degree, but was acting like state-run media. So there's no silencing of any conservative voices whatsoever. Smearing them, acting like Trump is the crazy one, that's true. Starting, then she says, start getting your facts straight. She says, I have studied both, been victim to both. Now, I don't know what she's talking about other than she's a victim now. So now I know that she is a victim somewhere in this circle because the victim doesn't take responsibility. So she's not taking responsibility, she's a victim. 
Uh, she says, you're still messed up. She misspells the word your. The evil ones are the deep state and the Dems. Again, creating the, you know, the, the victim mentality. And there's these persecutors and it's, and it's generalized. It's the Dems, the deep state. And there's no specifics. So this, again, is what happens when somebody's emotionally compromised, when they're operating from an emotional agenda, which means they need to promote their side and they will twist reality in order to fit their emotional state, which is one of being a victim. So um, she says she's a victim and she's using this. And then in all caps, here's where now she turns from the victim to the persecutor. So now she's going to persecute me for speaking my mind, which is just my mind, my opinion. I'm just some talking head on YouTube. Who gives a crap what I say? But it's so threatening to her that she's going to now start screaming at me in all caps and she's going to start demanding uh, what I do. She's going to start telling me what to do. She's going to try and control me through intimidation, uh, you know, outright violence almost. So she says they want total control and power, all capitals, evil. Then she says to me, stop saying Trump is disordered. He is standing up for freedom. His family, this is interesting. I, I don't even know if I said anything about his family. But this shows her projection. This is her projection of protecting her abusive family. His family is very loving and well-adjusted. Really? They love him. Ah, there's her projection. She loves her abusers. And so do a great many Americans. You're grasping here. Again, she misspells the word your. You're grasping here. Not true. So she now has become the persecutor and she, like my mother in that, uh, that example I gave you, she's going to sidle up to the persecutor and she's going to persecute me defending the persecutor, making him out to be the victim, that I'm victimizing him by calling him or asking these questions. And then my response, because you can't respond to somebody like that. And my response was, uh, do you have any other commands you'd like me to follow? Because it's really interesting. In terms of narcissism, she's blaming other people for being narcissists, and yet she's taken on the full, complete narcissistic uh, role, especially in the end. Because one of the things that codependents often do, like I've gotten this from the beginning, when I say that, that anybody who dates a borderline, you know, you have been with them for more than a week, you're by definition a codependent. It's not an accusation, that's just the reality. You're in a a dysfunctional relationship and in order for it to work somebody has to take on an inordinate amount of responsibility in order to keep the relationship going and if you're writing these all of these big you know paragraphs about how the borderline did this to you and did that to you and they you know they cheated on you 20 times and, and like well then you're a codependent that's the that's the definition it's not an accusation it's just a fact but then people come at me and start saying, start telling me that I'm a narcissist because I won't tell them what they want to hear. And so they will say, stop saying that I'm a codependent, you know, and they're going to, they're going to, in all caps, they're going to command that I stop having an opinion. And that is narcissistic. And so it's ironic. They're calling me narcissistic when they're acting narcissistic. So this person's doing the same thing. Anybody that doesn't see things the way she does is a narcissist. And again, that's a general attack which somebody uses when they're not getting what they want. To my knowledge, I haven't personally attacked or uh, criticized anybody. I may point out things like you're being this or you're acting this way in terms of your act. From my point of view, you're acting codependent or in this case, she's taking on the role of the codependent, but it's not a personal attack in any way. And you'll see, this will turn very personal. People will start attacking me personally because they, they're looking for you know, weapons to throw at me because they can't use anything else. And they're so angry at me because I am threatening their codependent abuser. They're protecting their abuser, which in this case I'm saying is Trump. Let's see what else. There's some more here. Let's get into it. Here's one. Calm down. The Democrats are the lunatics. Um, and, and then I say something again, I, I, there's just no point in trying to have a conversation. So I said something sarcastic like, oh, yeah, I totally get it. You're making total sense. And then the person says, laugh out loud. OK, now here comes the personal attacks. Again, no 
way of, you know, here's what I see, here's my logical understanding of it, here are the facts as I see it, here's why I believe this way, none of that. It's just now going to come to silencing the person who's bringing up an objection, who's bringing up a challenge. Uh, and so it's, it's now become personal. So he has to personally demonize me and attack me. And if he hurts me enough and intimidates me with the personal attacks, his hope is I'll stop talking. And in his mind, that's what happens in the codependent home. You better not have any negative feelings here. I'll give you something to cry about. And then people clam up and, you know, either they just go along and let them get away with it or they co-opt it and they become the... Uh, the hostage who then identifies with the abuser, just like in the, uh, what, I, what I call that syndrome, the, what is that? I keep wanting to say Helsinki syndrome, but it's not that. It's the Stockholm syndrome. So they take on the Stockholm syndrome. So I'm thinking that most of the people here are operating from Stockholm syndrome because most of the people who come on this channel are codependents because narcissists don't even think they have a problem. So... So anyway, this uh, codependent is now going to come and attack me personally. It says, go live in your fantasy world. And now he's going to get really personal and really try and hurt me. He's going to take information that I have shared openly to the world um, in an attempt to help promote healing. He's going to use that now to try and hurt me in you know, the deepest way he possibly can, which again, of course is very abusive. He says, go live in your fantasy world. Your BPDX must have got to you. You're clearly not well. Go have fun with your lunatic friends. And now he's going to do the ultimate discard by unfollowing the channel. He's going to say, I will now unfollow your channel. Trump 2024, deal with it. And then hashtag facts don't care about your fellings, which I think he meant to say feelings. Um, but I find that interesting because that's exactly what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that uh, the people who are following Trump are emotionally, um, they're, 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 they're stimulated by their unconscious emotional need to connect and protect the abuser. I'm saying that they're emotionally, um, you know, handicapped in this point. Their, their emotions are blinding their ability to see the truth. It doesn't matter how many investigations we do, it's all going to come up the same that Biden won, Trump lost. But we have to have one more. In fact, we're going to go storm the Capitol to force them to do one more investigation. Like that's going to change anything if we're talking about the facts. Um, so I agree with him. Facts don't care about your feelings. But it's interesting that he, that there's some you know, there's some hashtag that actually is saying the opposite. So again, we got projection. He is stating the true projection that he understands that his feelings are not in association with the facts. All right. Let's see. Let's see what else he says. Um, uh, what else? Okay, I'm not going to use that. All right. So somebody else comes on. Now, this guy's going to protect the other guy. So the other guy who got so upset that he had to unfollow me, he had to discard me, which don't worry, I'll get over. Uh, this guy has to come to his protection. And so this guy says, I've been following you because of my experience with Borderline X. This, however, meaning the video that I did yesterday, is completely crazy to say President Trump has BPD. Massive fraud was real, proven and ignored. Also proven Antifa broke into the Capitol. Actually, the, none of that's actually been completely disproven. More and more is coming out. Uh, you know, these are all Trumpites and there has been and is uh, a organized uh, faction uh, across the country of people who are planning to continue to do domestic terrorism in Trump's name. Antifa has nothing to do with it. And that doesn't mean I'm pro Antifa. It just means that, and I, I, it would be okay with me if somebody said Antifa. I mean, I wouldn't be okay with it, but I don't have a problem accepting that. If you can show me that, I'll accept it. I don't need. In fact, I don't even. I was so surprised when I found out how devoted Trump followers were. That's why I started thinking in these lines because it's not rational. We're not t talking about normal, even extreme political. Um, Zeal. We're talking about uh, cult-like. I mean, these people are in a cult. 
in their own creation. I mean, Trump isn't even even sophisticated enough to create a, a, a cult. The only thing he's done, the, the perfect storm of Trump is that he is the ultimate narcissistic borderline abuser. He's completely focused on himself. He doesn't have a plan. He's 100% impulse. And all he does is he attacks and uh, makes himself the victim and or ang aggrandizes himself and does whatever he can to get all of the attention. And it's very obvious to the rest of us. It's very obvious. I mean, we can see. We can see the abusive uh, cluster B personality just in full, you know, 100% full flame there. So the only, in my mind, the only person that would not only be gravitated to him, but, but uh, idolize the guy, either see him as this genius operative who's pretending to be part of the deep state in order to expose the deep state. And there you have the, uh, the codependent victim who is seeing their abuser, even BPD. We've got the BPD victim who's seeing their narcissistic abuser as the parent and idolizing them and turning, they can do no wrong. So here you have the borderline that says that uh, my narcissistic daddy can do no wrong. Um, anyway, so that's where I'm coming from. So he says, I've lost all credibility with this video, man. Well, okay. Trump is a patriot and is fighting evil. I pray you find the truth. So he's going to bring God into it. And we go back and forth. Let's see, what else? Uh, then somebody else comes along and says, maybe it's you that has BPD all along. Again, there's no rationality here. It's just the personal attacks. So this is what lends me just, again, it just, to me, really underscores and for me confirms that that's what we're dealing with. It's, you know, that's what's been so confusing. And I guess I've been in cognitive dissonance this whole time thinking that Trump's followers are rational, that there's something I could do or say, you know, if I had a Trump person next to me, there's something I could do or say to help them see. But what about the 60 court cases? What about all of the recounts? What about the Department of Justice investigation? What about Trump's, uh, you know, officer for the, you know, election security who said it was the safest? What about all of the Republican appointees, the Republican judges? What about all of the people who have, you know, I keep thinking that that's going to be enough, but it's not because, again, you're dealing with irrational codependents whose life they feel depends upon protecting their abusive daddy. So they either are protecting their abusive daddy or they identify with him. Those would be like the guys walking around with the Camp Auschwitz shirt on and with all of the tactical gear and with uh, bombs and um, with guns and, you know, beating cops over the head with American flagpoles. I mean, that would be the narcissist. And then you have, like I said, the Q shaman who didn't engage in any violence. I didn't engage in any violence, but I'm going to go there and talk about love and Q and spirituality and aliens coming and, you know, we're going to take over the, we're going to fight against, you know, his whole thing was, if you've listened to him, uh, Q, Q shaman says that, uh, he's there to protect the children from the, um, the uh, you know, those who are abusing children, the pedophiles, which makes me wonder about his childhood. Because he doesn't go in, and, as far as we know, he didn't do any violence, but he was there egging them on and supporting them. But he makes it, turns it into something spiritual. Now he's in jail, and apparently uh, his mother uh, went to the jail to protest because he needs to eat organic food. So here's a guy who needs to eat organic food and calls himself a shaman and yet he's um, you know grabbing shoulders with the Camp Auschwitz guy who's coming in and shooting and blowing things up you know trying to intimidate and or force lawmakers to do what he wants because they all believe that Trump is their messiah. So I think I've made my point. Uh, let's see uh, anybody wants to leave a comment I'm happy to take it. Uh, questions, uh, Freudian slip there. I'm happy to take a look at any um, any questions if you have any. Let's see, Kevin C. says, Good evening, mate. I really appreciate the time to put out your content. This topic is interesting. Thanks again. 
Evo, Evo says, the other day I saw a documentary about Keith Rainier, yeah, of Nexium. Yep, Nexium. Uh, Keith Rainier is a perfect example of the narcissist. I mean, he's pure NPD. Yeah, and how once you get in that, you know, your whole your whole mindset turns into how to, um, you know, how to to protect the abuser, and that whole. And I, I think, you know, again, Trump, Trump, Trump isn't that sophisticated, which is why I say he's BPD comorbid with NPD because he's not an evil genius. Keith Rainier is an evil genius. He plans this out and he's, you know, there's no break in the guy. You don't see that. But Trump goes back and forth. And, um, you know, like I remember the, the very early on when Fox News started love bombing him and especially Fox and Friends. And he had a strange uh, way of talking about them. He said that they were very honorable people which was a strange thing to say. I mean, he could have said, I really like them or they're very accurate, but he was clearly responding to the attention that he was getting. They were fawning over him. And his response was to turn them like the borderline does, that they're beautiful people. And if you've noticed in Trump's circle, what ends up happening? Anybody that gets close to him, he splits on them. So everybody that he's taken in his inner circle, he's fired at some point. There isn't one. There's just a, just bodies everywhere. All he does is he fires people. And uh, these are people that, I mean, look at Mike Pence. I mean, Mike Pence, he, he without so much saying so, but he pretty much put a, you know, a, a hit on, on Mike Pence. And his followers intuitively knew what he wanted. And they were saying, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence. I mean... You know, this is, you can't get more splitting than that. That's his way of splitting. That um, if you show him any love, like, again, he, he hates Obama, but when Obama invited him to the White House to, you know, show him the White House after he won, his first thing was, I, I think Obama really likes me. I think he likes me. I mean, again, his, it's all, his entire world is about how people, if people like him or love him. That's why I think he's got borderline with narcissism. I mean, he's got enough of a firewall that I think he's narcissistic as well. So um, I'm not saying he's pure borderline, but I definitely, I definitely see both with, with him. He doesn't have the Keith Rainier, just the firewall, complete, total, utter, malignant. Um, but at the same time, he's more dangerous than Keith Rainier because being borderline, he's pure impulse. 100% dissociative impulse. He just he just operates on whatever his impulse is. So let's see. Um, evo, evo, intelligent people getting brainwashed and doing inexplicable things and not questioning anything for a long time. The followers had one thing in common. Codependent, codependent people looking for an identity. I completely agree. That's what we see in all of them. What is the mantra of all of these people? whether it's the QAnons. So the QAnons are going to say that the alien reptilian overlords are uh, posing as elites and there's a pedophile ring. So they're going to identify with the ultimate victim, helpless victim in the world, which is a sexually abused child. That's the ultimate. So they're going to identify with that. And then you have uh, the the narcissists who are also victims, you know, the white supremacists who, you know, everybody's doing it to them and they're going to take over the world and take back, you know, everything for their particular race. And so they're the ultimate victim. And so there's the identification because they identify with Trump. So I completely agree. Trump and Trump isn't, again, not sophisticated enough to create this. He just happens to show up on the scene and because they like him, because people will say, I like him because he speaks his mind. No, he doesn't speak his mind. What you mean is that he speaks your mind. He sure as hell doesn't speak my mind. People say he's saying everything everybody wants to say, but is afraid to say it. No, he's not saying anything I want to say. So that means that's your projection. That's what you want to say. You want to be racist and you want to be exclusionist and you want to you know, say all those evil, horrible things. And that's good for you again abusive daddy you're going to run and and look up to an abusive daddy you might say to your to your sibling yeah dad's harsh with us but he has to because he loves us or 
yeah, I know, but he doesn't really mean it. Or, you know, if you've been sexually abused and you go out in public and you say, no, my dad's the best dad in the world and you don't admit. So he's just, you know, I mean, there's no doubt all those guys walking around with guns and Camp Auschwitz shirts. There's no doubt in my mind that they were abused on some level as kids. Because you don't grow up that way unless you were. Uh, a lot of they remind me of my brother uh, in a lot of ways. Not that my brother would have been exactly what I described, but the feeling of it feels the same. Uh, let's see. It's a big presumption, Shane Dodd says. It's a big presumption that 80 million people suffer from malignant codependency. I hope you make your way back. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Now he's going to attack me personally. He feels personally attacked. What he's not saying here is you're talking about me. I don't know Shane Dodd. I've never seen him. I don't know him. I don't have his phone number. I didn't call him up and say, hey, I'm making a video about you. Nothing. This is him clearly identifying with what I'm describing. He's a, obviously a, a, Trump, uh, a Trump follower. Now, if what I'm saying doesn't apply to you, then why get so, so stimulated that you need to personally attack me? Because that's what you're doing here. Um, I hope you make your way back to your own victimhood in your relationship. So now he's going to say that I'm a victim. And anybody who watches this channel knows that I only make these videos to tell people that I'm no longer in any way victimized by my borderline. I share stories about it, but all I'm here to do is tell you, you got to take responsibility. You got to forgive them. You got to love them. So this is your projection. So that tells me your borderline ex, you still have some some victimhood feelings and because I've said something you don't want to hear you're gonna project onto me so now I know how you feel about yourself and I hope you're not you know I give you the the right to not be so hard on yourself I'm, I'm not gonna take any of this on because I know it's not accurate but it tells me about you this is the thing about about projection when if you're in that circle if you're the persecutor the rescuer the victim it's all projection, whether you're attacking somebody like I'm right, the rescuer, I'm good, and the victim, I'm blameless, right? So I hope you wake, make your way back to your victimhood and your relationship with your ex who was so terrible. I don't know what TDS stands for, but let's see. I'm sure, again, I'm sure it's some cute, clever way of attacking me personally. And Yeah. Kevin C., I feel it's very unfortunate that the vocal minority always seems to end up representing the two opposing teams. Uh, okay. I, okay. Kevin C., question. With respect, when you say Trump followers, do you mean anyone who voted for him? Is that what I said? <laughs> Is that what I said? Did I say anybody who voted for him? That's not what I said. I'm talking about the Trump followers that believe passionately that he was that the election was stolen from him uh, assuming that you've bothered to hear all of the news available about the 60 uh, court cases about the doj investigation about the multiple recounts that you've listened to all of those people that he's attacked you've listened to the governor of Virginia, the Attorney General of Virginia, who have explained in detail, no, we counted it three times. We did uh, signature verifications. I voted for Trump. Uh, this just, the, the facts are the facts. I can't change that. If you've looked at that and you see, okay, Trump is, is calling him uh, a liar when he clearly isn't. I mean, if you, if you voted for him and you have uh, the ability to shift and change your views based on objective evidence, then obviously I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a follower, a sycophant, somebody that, you know, will, will somehow try to explain away Trump's obvious malignant narcissism. You know, anybody who says proudly that, um, yeah, I just grab women by the pussy. I just kiss them. Uh, because I can get away with it. I mean, th that isn't up for debate. This is the guy we're talking about. I mean, he's, he, you know, he, he's, like I said, he attacks everybody. And he, he's constantly the victim, and he's been caught in multiple lies. And his followers will say, yeah, he's a liar, but, and then they'll come up with some excuse for it. You've got Christians, born-again Christians, 
who believe in, you know, uh, one man, one woman marriage. They don't believe in uh, sex outside of marriage. They don't believe in uh, pornography. And here's a guy who's a known philanderer, cheats on his wife with porn stars, who says out loud that because he's uh, uh, a celebrity, he just kisses women whenever he wants and grabs them by the pussy. You know, I mean, this isn't up for grabs. This isn't just uh, accusations without proof. This is him. This is him saying it. So for somebody who's a born-again Christian to then turn around and say, this is God's man, he represents God's values, there's a clear disconnect. Something ain't right. Because Trump, whatever he is, he's definitely not a born-again Christian. He is not a religious person by the, in anybody's book. So that means the projection is really big because, as I said in the previous video, Christians project... Uh, they have the ultimate codependent victim relationship because Jehovah is the narcissistic, murderous abuser who hates his children that he created so much so that he's going to put them in hell forever. Then, in order to increase the guilt, he takes his other son, which is perfect, who is somehow him as well, and he puts all of his rage that he has for every single human being, including you, for every single sin they've ever created, or done, he puts all of that rage onto his perfect son and ritually murders him in public so that you will feel guilty and know how much he loves you. I mean, that's the twisted thinking of the narcissist abuser. So born again Christians, they're just completely, and here comes Trump, he's Jehovah. He's acting like the Jehovah. Thou shalt have no other gods before me if you do not follow all of my laws. And you know, here's a, one of my favorite Christian verses is, um, you know, God's wisdom and man's wisdom, you know, aren't the same. In other words, God can get away with doing things we don't understand, but we can't. If you did the things Jehovah did, they'd lock you up as a narcissistic abuser, as a murderer. But Jehovah does it. We can't, we can't, uh, you know, that's what they're doing with Trump. Trump is a womanizer, abuser, a liar, a thief. I mean, he's convicted on all of these things. He's, he's got, I mean, how many times was he investigated? We forget about you know, all of the investigations that have gone on before he was even president. And so the narcissist and the codependent can project their victim on him and say, yeah, all of these baseless attacks on him. I mean, he's constantly being attacked. That's the codependent alcoholic mother saying, no, you don't understand. He just wants to to help you. He, he, yeah, he beat you and put you in the hospital, but it's because he loves you. And you made him do it. You provoked him to anger. You provoked God to anger, so he created a flood. So, um, you say Trump followers. Do I, I don't, I mean those who are still following him, who think that the, even this, they want to blame, again, very codependent. There's no, there's no doubt who launched the attack. It was Trump followers. No doubt about that. There isn't one Antifa person in there. But here comes the gaslighting. Oh, no, there were Antifa sympathizers. How do you know that? I, I saw it on um, super ultra right wing fascist news channel. And, and we don't watch, you know, the mainstream media. I, I mean, the uh, independent media. I mean, the mainstream media. You know, it's just codependents run amok. That's why I said there's just no point in trying to have a conversation with these people because the objective facts just aren't, aren't relevant to them. It's, it's, what I'm saying is that each one of, of the people in this, this triangle here feels that their life is in danger. They feel you know, they're running away from the emptiness inside of them and that feels like it's killing them. And to do anything to disrupt that will feel like it's killing them, which is why codependents don't want to leave their narcissistic abusers or their borderline abusers. They don't want to leave them. They, some of them, once they're alone, it's worse than being with the abuser because the pain and the loneliness is too much to handle. And that's what's happening here. We're just seeing it being played out and projected on a national scale, on a world scale, really, because there's people all over the world. There's people here in this country that think Trump is, you know, great. You know, I mean, it's, anyway, you get my point. Let's see what else. Because I feel like when you take the entire population of the country into consideration, it's more likely that someone that voted for him 
don't like love him. Yeah, I, so that's, I, I think I addressed that. So Kevin, what you're not doing here, which I would appreciate, is being honest. So what you're saying is, if you really want to own it, you can say, hey, Mike, I don't like what you're saying because I voted for Trump and I feel like you're talking about me. You don't have to make it into the third person. I'm not going to attack you for your feelings. As long as you don't attack me personally and say anything mean about me, you can have any feelings you want. I will support you in your feelings. As we all know, feelings aren't facts, though. So no, I, as long as you give me the ability to separate you from your feelings and objective reality from your feelings. Again, this is the cluster B codependent mindset. This is the, the infantile narcissism which says, my feelings are the truth. And the reason why people say my feelings are the truth is because when they were little kids, their feelings were not acknowledged. So they don't have the ability to self-parent. They don't have the ability to go, wow, I have this intense feeling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's really going on. Borderline is a great example. You look at your watch at dinner and she says, I can't believe you did that. I loved you. I was going to marry you and you're going to break up with me. You, you, I was thinking about saying something to you and you looked at your watch and I can never see you again. You're the most horrible person in the world. And you're like, but that's not at all what I was thinking or feeling. But for her, because she never had the chance to even have her feelings, her feelings are reality. This is Trump. This is why you say to Trump, but Trump, you lost. He says, no, I couldn't have lost. You say to his, his followers, no, but here's all the court cases that prove that the election was legal. No, I know that Trump wouldn't, you know, he's the best. And people say, I want to see my, my president on the throne. It means that their feelings, that if you don't give them what they, their emotions are telling, their impulses are telling them, they feel that their entire life is snuffed out. That's why they're willing to die. That's why QAnon shaman is willing to go to prison and die for Trump. Because he can't tell the difference between his, his infantile narcissistic experience of his feelings and understand that my feelings are not objective reality. That even though I have this feeling doesn't mean I have to act on it. He doesn't know that. Because for him, not acting on his feelings is death. And this is all of us. If we're part of this triangle, we all experience that. That's why we can't leave the borderline. We can't leave the borderline because the need to express your rescuer when you want to rescue them that's your narcissistic feeling of the pain of you trying to heal your own pain and the impulse to find the victim and heal them at, the, at all costs you'll destroy your life at all costs just to have one more chance to heal the borderline that's, you can't get past your narcissistic feeling of needing to be loved. You're expressing it that way. You're projecting it that way. The, the persecutor, the narcissist, the borderline says, I have a feeling. I demand that you meet it. You meet my feeling right now. Otherwise, I'll die. And then the, you know, then the victim who says, I haven't done anything wrong. Um, you know, and you rock, walk, this is something I run into a lot. Like you may, maybe Kevin, you feel this way, but I run, I run into this a lot when I will share my perspective on what somebody is saying or doing and they take it as a personal attack and I'll say, Hey, hang on. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about what you said. But for me to disagree with what you said, all of a sudden now I'm attacking your essence. I'm not attacking your essence. Whereas you see people on here, if I disagree with them, if they're acting like a borderline, they'll attack my essence. They'll say all kind. They'll say the the most damaging thing they can find based on personal information that I've shared on here. They'll pick out some of it and then lob it against me, in a desperate attempt to try and hurt me as badly as they can. All because they feel I've attacked them. So that's what you're saying. You say I feel like when you take the entire population of the country. First off, I'm not taking the entire population of the country. I'm taking the Trump followers, which seem to be a good 30%. We've got 40 to almost 50 that are, you know, we've got another 10 or 20% that are sort of in this gray area. Maybe they don't know. But again, that you, you're hearing this as a personal attack. And again, Kevin, I don't know who you are. I've, ne I've never met you. I don't know your face, right? So just think about that. You're feeling personally attacked. 
Do you see any anger in me right now? Do you see me coming at anybody? I've talked about this in as, you know, as calm a demeanor as I can. Uh, you know, and if I, as you know, if I can have the compassion and the love that I have for borderlines, I have compassion and love for these people. You know, the guy with the Auschwitz, Camp Auschwitz shirt on, there's no doubt in my mind he was, he was abused. No, no two ways about it. I have, t I have nothing but compassion for him. Now, I still think he needs to be in prison because he's a dangerous person and for what he's done. But that's not a personal attack. All right, what else? Let's see what else. Uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that when you give the entire country only two choices, well, I'm not the one that's giving them two choices. Again, this is a projection. I'm not doing that. Trump is doing that. Trump is being, uh, Trump is being the narcissist. Trump is being Jehovah. Trump says, like, you know, in the Bible, uh, Jehovah says to Moses, if you follow every single one of my commands to the letter, you love me. And if you love me, I will bless you in all of these ways. And then he doesn't say, and if you don't love me, he doesn't say that. He says, if you don't follow all of my commandments, then you hate me. And if you hate me, then I will destroy you in all these ways. This is Trump. Trump has been telling his viewers that. And the viewers, his viewers, his followers, his hardcore followers went into the Capitol to either kill or manipulate or, uh, you know, frighten through intimidation, through force with zip ties to get them to do what they wanted. There was no discussion. It's a black and white decision. So much so, if you don't do it according to them, if you don't do what they want, they'll kill you. That's the black and white. This is a projection. I'm not doing that. I understand that you feel that way, but bear in mind that that black and white decision has been put there by Trump, who, like Jehovah, has said, if you don't follow all of my commandments, then you hate me. And if you hate me, then I must go to war with you. Which is not what a loving person says. A loving person says, if you don't agree with me, let's talk about it. Let's see if we can find some, you know, a loving parent says, I love you exactly who you are. You don't have to do everything I want to get my love. You just have to be yourself. That's not what Jehovah says. That's not what Trump says. So I'm not the one giving you that choice. That's coming from Trump and you're projecting that onto me. But I understand why you feel that way. Let's see what else? Um, what else? What else? What else? I guess the point I'm trying to make is that when you give the entire country only two choices, a lot of people vote Trump for a conservative policy, not because they love him. Well, so I don't understand why you're focusing on this. That was four years ago or recently. So again, you're obviously talking about yourself and you're trying to justify. Again, you're now the codependent kid trying to justify. I'm not doing that to you. All I want to do, I, and this never has been about, if you voted for Trump, this is about, let's look at the psychological dynamics here. So this is your projection on me. I, I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me to even come up with the who voted for who. Because the real problems, I mean, I, mean, I personally have had problems with them from the beginning, but in terms of the craziness, that started after the election. So after somebody had voted, they voted for whatever reason they voted. It was Trump's response to that and his continued, um, you know, creating these false conspiracies that didn't exist and continuing in a very irresponsible way, just like what started this. You know, the decision has already been made. Congress has already made their decision. The, the judges, the courts, the counters, the attorneys general, the, you know, everybody has certified it and made their decision. And he very irresponsibly did not protect his followers by ushering them into a cooperative, democratic way of life. 
he gave them an excuse to act on their narcissism, which was, we don't care if Biden won or not. He's not my president, and I'm going to blow up the Capitol because I want my guy in, even if I lost. And they're going to justify that by saying, no, I mean, he obviously, it's a conspiracy. I mean, they know. They all know. They all know underneath that he lost. They all know it. This is, this is just total codependent denial here. Dad's a good guy. Oh, he only drinks at night. Um, yeah, he, he beats us, but he only does it because he loves us. It's just that. It's, all, it's that. Or their projection. Uh, they see themselves in it and they want to get what they want. And now this guy's giving them an excuse to break the rules. And they're going to pretend like they're following the rules in their denial, but they're not. You know, one guy was asked, I talked about this on the last video. One guy was asked by a reporter uh, at the, the latest you know, gathering at the Alamo, asked the guy, well, what would you do if you found out that Trump was lying? And I appreciate his honest response because he could have done the normal thing, which is, well, that's impossible. Trump never lies or it's a, you know, it's a whatever, a hoax. He didn't do that. He responded honestly, which I appreciate, which was, well, if that turns out to be true, then I don't think I could ever vote again. That's really important because these people, this is their last hope. This is the last ditch hope for their victim mentality. And if Trump lied to them, then they will be crushed. They'll be crushed to such an extent that they won't even vote. They're still not even taking into account that the vote was fair. For them, they lost the vote, which means they die. They don't exist. God doesn't love me. I can never vote again. So you see, it's just the ultimate codependent victim mentality here. Let's see. Your advice on how I can phrase a question to you was welcoming. I'm really not on one side or the other. Politically, Trump is a joke. I don't think the alternative is great either. What do you mean the alternative? You mean Biden? So what? Biden is just one person. You know, I mean, Hillary Clinton was just one person. I understand. I wasn't too thrilled with Hillary Clinton. I mean, she definitely wasn't a baby eating, uh, you know, reptilian. I just thought that she wasn't very good at negotiating. I thought she came off as kind of a bitchy, controlling woman. And she, you know, showed that with her, you know, she didn't do anything uh, really horrific. But, you know, the way she handled her emails was very irresponsible. And, you know, I mean, all that stuff is true. So it's, it's not a black and white thing. I didn't think she was great. I didn't vote for anybody because I just like, you know, if, if Hillary gets in, then nothing will get done again for another four years. Um, and obviously I couldn't vote for Trump. But, uh, you know, this idea that it's the other side, you know, you're, again, you even pointed that, but I, I want to challenge you on taking a look at that. There isn't a the other side. There isn't a the mainstream media. There isn't a the elite. There isn't a, you know, the anything. There's all a bunch of little different things that sometimes come together in a perfect storm. Like in this one, we can say, you know, the Trump, uh, you know, wagon train that follows him. We can say that now. But I mean, they're made up of a bunch of different people. They're made up of the QAnon shamans. They're made up with the, uh, the uh, racist guys. They're made up with frustrated victim guys who are looking for any reason to validate their victimhood. There are guys who, who have ultimate uh, actual uh, problems with um, you know, politics. There are people that only get their information from Fox News and right wing you know, uh, media nonsense who haven't even learned the difference between journalism and opinion news. There's, a, there's just a whole uh, spectrum of people in there. I'm not, I don't think I'm blind to that. But they're acting like one chunk. Let's see. Uh, you're right. It's hard to talk about on a text because it gets hard for thing, things get uh, misunderstood. Um, all right. I, I mean, it makes sense, but there's something in there, Kevin. There's something in there that I'm not that I'm reacting to, and it could just be my projection, but it feels like there's some some unspoken, unconscious something in there that's stimulating me anyway all right i don't see any more questions or comments i think i've made my point 
And um, I was really, like I said, I was really grateful to hear Trump uh, say that, um, you know, urge his followers not to cause any damage. I was really surprised and happy to hear it. Let's hope that he, I think he's in between splitting right now. <laughs> so let's hope he doesn't split again and, uh, you know, do something else. And let's hope that the nutbags who clearly now I'm aware of, there's a whole nationwide uh, effort of, of homegrown terrorists that uh, want to cause a lot of damage. And uh, let's hope that uh, they get caught. I'd like to see all of them put in jail. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see politicians go to jail and or be censured or fined for knowingly um, manipulating their base by fomenting doubt over an election that they knew was fair. I'd like to see Fox News be sued and censured for all of the times that they, you know, they're, you know, whoever the guys, the guys' names are, I forget his name, you know, the, the opinion guys that, that foment all of the doubt and don't, you know, don't own, don't do any verification or research. Um, I'd like to see, I'd like to see um, them sued or, you know, there needs to be accountability. Because uh, all the politicians who sit there and grandstand and say things like, you know, this is one of the things that's bothered me the most with some of the Republicans. They will say, there are a lot of people out there who are frustrated and confused. They're, now, they know that they're, they're not saying, I'm frustrated, I'm confused, I don't know what the truth is. They're not saying that. They're saying those people who I represent are confused. And so in order to placate them and in order to keep them following me, I'm going to tell them that there was some kind of a lie and we're going to, but you know, I'm not going to do anything legally, say anything that can legally get me in trouble, but I'm going to keep them in the dark so that they'll follow me and give me their money and vote for me. And, um, you know, say things like, you know, I've heard politicians even, you know, one, one, I think it was Lindsey Graham, who's now getting his ass handed to him by his own followers, his own base, where he said, I think, in my opinion, something's fishy. And he did that on purpose because he knew that the objective facts were opposite. He didn't say, I see objectively that there's something wrong here. He was echoing the sentiments of his followers who are operating from their narcissistic childish feelings when they say, I feel upset that Trump isn't, you know, my king. And people say, in my opinion, you know, in my opinion, the world is, is flat. Well, your opinion means nothing. The world is either round or it's flat. Your opinion is meaningless here. I think there was something, in my opinion, Trump won. Well, your opinion is meaningless. The facts are what matter. And so I think all those guys that use that kind of language to continue to stoke the confusion, I think they should be, uh, I think there should be some legal ramifications. I think there, that um, news organizations need to be legally responsible for the things that they say. And if they say anything that is, no, that they knowingly are saying something that is not factual, just to get the hype and get the viewership and that causes people to go out and get guns and storm the capital i think they need to be held complicit in that you know we really need to hold people accountable for what they say this is why i'm doing this video because you know there's no shortage of people that want to uh, silence me you know from the beginning uh the codependents wanted to silence me the borderlines wanted to silence me and, you know, people attack me personally. And one, you know who she is. I don't even need to mention her name, but you know who she is. She might even be watching this video. She made it her, you know, I was her nemesis. She's, uh, you know, trolls my channels, both of them all the time with fake profiles and, do, and throwing the thumbs down, trying to, I don't know what she thinks she's doing. Taking titles from my videos and then, you know, in the same day making the same video and just turning it to a negative. So she can, you know, have this, this passive aggressive fight with me, you know, I mean, it, um, so point is, I'm not going to silence, I'm not going to allow people to uh, bully me into not speaking my mind. And if you can't handle it, that's okay with me. 
but I'm not doing it for any other reason other than to do my part to help people see the truth and to heal. And if that means I piss you off, then so be it. You know, there's plenty of other places for you to go. You won't hurt my feelings one way or another. I'm not here to get anybody to love me, and I'm not here to just have people be angry with me. I'm here to share with people what I know to be true for me in terms of how to heal from this horrific codependent thing, you know, being involved with a cluster B. But that's what I see. I see a bunch of cluster B behavior in almost half of the population of the United States, and I think it's worth talking about, and I'm going to keep talking about it as long as I think it's relevant. And when it stops being relevant, I'll stop talking about it, and I'll go back to making other kinds of videos. All right, let's see what else. Um, very good. All right. I don't got anything else to say. I don't think anybody else has any other questions. So uh, that's it. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you around when I see you.